Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, your brother Gabriel Romani. Taking again your questions for my tazkia. Um, how to differentiate between my nafs and the addiction? Well, that is something very, very difficult. Because Allah subhanahu wa says, Inna nafsa la amaratu bisu illa man rahma rabbi. Indeed, the nafs is what inclines you towards evil. So actually they're connected. The nafs and the addiction are connected. Your addiction is feeding the nafs. And your nafs wants the addiction. Because the nafs, the evil part of it anyway, wants to incline towards things that are comfortable, things that are pleasurable, not necessarily good for you. So a lot of people think that if something feels good or pleasurable, that somehow this is good for you. No, most things that feel very good and are pleasurable are actually not good for you in the long term. Sugar, for example, very pleasurable, very nice, tastes amazing. It's the best friend of cancer, right? And many other problems. It can kill you, but it tastes amazing, isn't it? And remember, it's not just sugar that you put a spoon and you dip a spoon in, uh, you know, a sugar bowl or something. No, I'm talking about chocolate, everything that's sweet like that could have long-term very very severe consequences on your health so there is no differentiation i believe addiction is linked to the nafs and nafs will incite you towards that addiction what we need to understand is how to control the nafs and how to limit the nafs so it doesn't be so it's not controlled by the addiction right so actually the nafs should control the addiction, not the addiction, the nafs, right? So we do that through constant dhikr and salah and qiyam and our ibadah. If you look at Islam, it's all basically structured in such a way to fight the nafs. Now the question might be like, why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create me in such a way that I have to deal with this? This is the test. That's why it's called submission. Allah has made you in such a way that you are susceptible to sin, you're susceptible to corruption, you're susceptible to, and I see a chocolate from here right now, and I'm really susceptible to eating that chocolate. But you see, it's like, I was just looking that way. I was like, man, chocolate. Um, but yeah, it's like, that's that's what I want. Like, oh, I want it, right? Most likely I'm going to have it, right? But that's how the nafs in, incites us. And Allah has created that way, but he has told us to control ourselves. He has told us, this is submission, where you are, you have this nature or this vulnerability, you're predisposed to these sins and this corruption, but you fight it. And know that Allah comes between a person and their heart, your desire. The deen comes between what you want and what you should do. What you want is not what you should do. It's very, very different. What you want is what your nafs wants. What makes you feel good and what you should do is what Allah and His Messenger tell you. And that's where the big jihad comes in, the big struggle. Right? So that's how what we should do in training the nafs through all the ibadat. For people who stay away from the ibadat, they don't fast, they don't pray, you're basically being led by your nafs. And the first thing that the nafs will tell you is to stop this ibadah. Why? Because the ibadah is not so, so comfortable. In many cases, you know, waking up early in the morning and so on, it takes training and time till you feel halawatul iman or the sweetness of iman. It takes time. So in training that nafs, it is sometimes very uncomfortable and difficult. But that's submission, right? So that's what we have to work on, inshallah. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.